One happy Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you for joining me for the prayer therapy session for today. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you to all of you who are joining us on the prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're not yet joining us, yeah, what in the world are you waiting for? Come on, come join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know that your lives will be transformed. You'll be healed, delivered, and set free in the name of Jesus. Today, I have brought you the prayer therapy session, and we are praying today to destroy yokes of limitation. The, the Holy Spirit placed this on my spirit to pray over you and for you to pray along at every yoke of limitation that causes stagnation, that leads to failure, uh, that, that never allow people to become the, the, the fullest, uh, best of themselves or to reach their fullest potential in life, that God will break that yoke today and that you will be unstuck. Some of you have said, I need to get unstuck. I, I, I feel like I'm stuck. God is saying, there is a way out and you will get unstuck in the name of Jesus as you partner with God in the place of prayer. This is, um, let, let, let's go quickly and talk about prayer. Acts of Apostles chapter 16 from verse 25 to 30. The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword because he knew if, if his masters found out, if the captain found out that he had, you know, on his watch, these prisoners had been set free, they were going to kill him. So he decided he was just going to take his own life. But the Bible says, and he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sir, uh, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Here we have souls being one because Paul and Silas decided to pray. They decided that even in prison, they were going to pray until their chains were loosed, until they were set free, until they were delivered. Now, if Paul and Silas hadn't prayed, yes, they were bound. Yes, that they weren't just put in prison. The Bible said they were bound. Their feet were bound. Their hands were bound were bound and then they were thrown in the prison it's like there shouldn't have been a way out but they decided that even in their bondage even in their situation they were going to pray and if they hadn't prayed guess what they would have remained stuck they would have remained stagnated and unable to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives and they might have even been killed because the reason they were thrown in there was so that they wouldn't be able to deliver anybody else. They wouldn't be able to pray for anybody else. They wouldn't be able to preach the gospel to anybody else. And salvation would have been, you know, stalled because people were not going to be able to hear from the apostles the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the, the plan of the people that captured them was to make sure that they remained bound. And if they hadn't prayed, I tell you, they would have remained stuck in the prison, they would have remained stagnated, and they would have been unable to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. So if you want to get unstuck, the Holy Spirit said to tell you, if you want to advance in your life and in your destiny, if you no longer want to be stagnated, if you want to prosper in that thing that God has given to you to do, that thing that he has called and ordained you to do, you must pray, my God. You must pray. James chapter 5 and verse 13 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. 
Let him pray. That is the only prescription. Let him pray. Let him pray. The Lord said to tell you your situation changes not when you pray, but when you pray consistently, when you pray fervently, when you pray effectually, your situation changes not when you pray because many people will say, but I've been praying. Yes, keep praying. My God, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Do not every time you feel like you are feeling tired of praying is the attack of the enemy because he knows your breakthrough is near. My God, he knows if you continue to pray, you will be set free. You will be delivered. You will be healed. You will get unstuck. You will be able to fulfill God's purpose for your life. That stagnation, that yoke of stagnation will be broken off of your life. That yoke of limitation will be broken off of your life. So you must understand the wiles of the enemy. He says, if any one of you is afflicted, yes, let him pray. Let him pray. Limitation is an affliction. Sickness is an affliction. Stagnation is an affliction. My God, the, the inability to fulfill destiny is an affliction. The Bible says if you are in any such situation, let him pray. Let him pray. Let him pray. Let anyone who is afflicted pray. That's the prescription. And if your situation is to change, it won't be just because you pray. It will change because you pray consistently. It will change because you pray fervently. It will change because you pray effectually. And if that's not your story, that's not what you've been doing, get to work. My God, my God, get to work. Get to work. You must pray consistently. You must pray fervently. You must pray effectually. And that's why these videos are not just, you know, one time I watched it and I'm done. It, yeah, if you already know what to pray, pray it. But if you ever feel like I need help praying, click on any one of these videos that, that, that are speaking to your situation and you will be empowered to pray. Yes, somebody else is praying. Can help light your fire. My God, it can help you light your fire so that you too can pray and press in further and press in further. And prayer is not just, you know, I hate to say this, but some believers believe all they have to do is pray and then they pray and they do nothing else. But if there's something the Lord has been telling you to do, while your praying is giving you instructions and I don't know who God is speaking to you must obey the instructions because it works hand in hand with the prayer my God, if he's giving you an instruction, either you like the instruction or not, it works hand in hand with prayer, so prayer without works is useless that is, that, that ought to set somebody free today that may just be that yoke of limitation over your life that you need to get free from. And so today we are going to pray. I don't want this video to be too long. Our God, we are going to pray. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before your presence. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you for your faithfulness. We thank you because whenever we call, you always answer us. You have even given us instruction that we shall call upon you and you will answer us. You will show us great and mighty things that we have not yet known. Therefore, we have come today and we ask, oh God, everything that may hinder the answers to our prayers. Father, we ask that you forgive today, that you destroy today in the name of Jesus. If it be sin, if it be unrighteousness, if it be unholiness, if it be disobedience, if it be lack of faith, if it be doubt, if it be fear, if it be prayerlessness, Father, Lord, today, we ask that you forgive us and destroy those things out of our lives in the name of Jesus. And therefore, Lord, we pray every year of limitation over your people. I pray today over them that it will be broken in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus, let every yoke of self-limitation be broken where they have been programmed and they've told themselves hey, that there's nothing better that they can do, that they cannot move forward, that is a mind programming, that is powered by the kingdom of darkness. Let that yoke today be 
broken in the name of Jesus. Let that stronghold of self-limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke of self-limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke of demonic stronghold of limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. We pray and we come against every territorial limitation. Every territorial stronghold that says if you were born in this country, you can't make it. If you were born into this family, you cannot make it. If you were born into this state, you cannot make it. You're always going to struggle. Today by the power and the authority in the name that is above every other name. We destroy that territorial stronghold in the name of Jesus. Let that territorial limitation be shattered today in the name of Jesus. Let that power of darkness that has held your people bound be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. If it is you who have been getting your st- yourself stuck where you are just sitting there and, and just saying I, I'm stuck I don't I don't know what to do I don't I, I can't move forward but you're sitting there doing nothing the, the, the devil is fighting your mind I pray today that that mind game comes to an end in the name of Jesus that demonic mind game from the coven of darkness comes to an end in the name of Jesus oh now begin to tell yourself I am moving forward. I am moving forward. I am advancing. No more limitation. No more delay. No more stronghold of darkness. Over my life, I am getting unstuck. Begin to prophesy over your life now. I am moving forward. I am becoming all that God has created me to be. I will no longer be stagnated. I will no longer be limited. When I serve a limitless God. I will no longer be limited in my thinking. I will no longer be limited in my reasoning. I will no longer be limited by the company that I keep. My God, my God. I will no longer be limited by, 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 by the stigma of the people. I will no longer be limited by my past. Some of you, the Spirit of God says it's what has happened and in your past that is affecting you now and it is already programmed to, to, to continue to affect your future. You have got to set yourself free today. You have got to shake yourself off. Out of that stronghold in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free that your past will no longer control your present. Your past will no longer control your future. In in the name of Jesus, because him, uh, whoever the Lord has set free, whoever the Son has set free is free indeed. Be free indeed today in the name of Jesus. Be free indeed. Be free indeed. Be free indeed. My God, let that chain that has held you bound fall off of you in the name of Jesus. That chain on your mind, on your thoughts, that chain that has held your spiritual life bound, that has not allowed you to grow in God. Mm, you're, still, you're still dwelling on old encounters and, and you, have, you have not seen any shift. You have not seen any growth. You have not seen any momentum as it comes to the things of the Spirit, as it comes to your relationship with God, as it comes to your ability to to legislate things in the realm of the spirit. Oh, be set free in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God come upon you to propel you forward in the name of Jesus. And as he is doing it, you will not resist it. Some of you are resisting the hand of God that has come to propel you forward. You're resisting that word that is supposed to help you get up and gather momentum to move forward. You're resisting the process that is supposed to help you. You're resisting any 
one that is encouraging you to pray. Oh, that is the place where you're going to gather the strength. That is the place where you're going to gather the wisdom. That is the place where you're going to get a divine revelation. That is the place where you're going to get a divine strategy, even to move forward, but you won't go there. Let the power of God thrust you even into the place of prayer now. Receive fresh fire. Ye gadabush. To pray. To seek the face of God. To stay in his presence. And as you receive that divine instruction. You will move swiftly. The grace for obedience will come upon you. And you will do as the Lord has spoken to you. And you will be set free indeed. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. We give you praise for having answered. For you are the God who answers by fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you once again for joining me for this prayer therapy session. I know that I know that you have been blessed and I know that I know that I know that as long as you continue to pray and continue to seek the face of God, you, you too will be set free in the name of Jesus. And go with that mindset that you are already set free and you begin to put one foot in front of the other as instructed by the Spirit of God and you will see a change in the name of Jesus. It is your turn to be advanced. It is your turn to be promoted. Go listen to the prophetic word from Sunday and you will get more revelation as the Lord is speaking to us in this season. God bless you. Thank you for joining me once again. Join us on the prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is just a token of what we do. Come, come fellowship. <laughs> come fellowship with us. God bless you. Have a wonderful and a blessed rest of your day.